He just asked me, can you do something to attract attention? So I took off my shoes. So that's the, that's the real story. No, not really. Okay. Um, I have a confession to make. Um, when I was 11 years old, I bought my first drum kit as a drummer. And I wanted to be in a rock band. Long story short, we weren't that successful. I lost our first recording and I had to come up with something else. So I built some companies in media. And it was okay, it was successful, it was really good, but I always longed for this one thing, to be sort of wearing black, to grow my hair, and make a lot of noise. And one of the good things of having a company called Rockstar is you get to grow your hair, wear black, and make a lot of noise. So my promise to you today is, I will give you some noise, some insights in how we help people build companies because we really feel and believe that Building a company is a direct leap towards liberation and enlightenment, something like that. Anyway, um, Rockstar, we are about startups, obviously, but the thing is, we're not about taking equity stakes in fast-growing companies. This is a love for um, what they stand for, and it's about startups building something that gives everyone involved a message of promise and hope and of possibility. And I guess that that's what we're in for, Rockstar. We love startups. My name is Oscar Knepes. I'm the founder of the company a little over six years ago. And I have 40 minutes here on stage to give you sort of the why, the how, and the what of startups and what you can learn from them. I have 80 slides and four movies. We have a short time, so let's go. The essence is the one thing, if I have to sort of cut back everything that we do, what we stand for, what I believe in, into one slide, this is the one slide. And the one slide says, if you are able to get out of your comfort zone, you will enter this space of abundance where the magic happens, where everything seems to be sort of happened for a reason that is so natural. If you step out of your comfort zone, you will enter a space of abundance where the magic happens. It's not about a business plan. It's not about the money and the spreadsheets. It's not about the big, hairy, audacious goal. It's about this, the first step forward out of your comfort zone into this space where the magic happens. We've been doing this for over five years. Last year, we celebrated that in style. To give you an example, this is our new CEO with somebody else's girlfriend partying all night long when we did our celebrations. So this is sort of the feel of Rockstar. But first, many people feel that if you look at this globe, we are faced with many, many challenges, big issues, big problems. And I guess that it's true. Now more than ever, we need to do something to address these challenges. And the thing is, if you look at it, you can feel depressed, but half a billion entrepreneurs actually are building something that not always works for the benefit of change for this globe, but in many cases, it actually does, because they step into this space of making something happen, something that they believe in. Half a billion entrepreneurs, that's a shitload of people, that's many, many new companies. And why are they doing this? Because everything is changing. If you look around you, everything is changing. So before we did anything else, I started writing a manifesto just to sort of sketch the feeling of the times that we're in. And this is the Rockstar Manifesto, and if we have audio, this will help. Look around you. Everything is changing. Companies, countries, structures, how people work, it's all in flux. We love it. Here's why. We're entering exciting times in an exploding entrepreneurial society. You thought corporations, banks, governments were looking after us? Well, they didn't. You want security? Safety? Stop looking around you. Find it here and now, in yourself. Take charge of your own destiny. This incredible time has made entrepreneurship attractive and more available than ever. It leads to endless opportunities for those ready to grasp it. Go on. Luckily, this change forces us to adopt an adventurous spirit. Embrace change. Love risk. Live with uncertainty. We need to jump into the great unknown, look for adventure, seek out our own opportunities. 
Like the original explorers pioneered their way across seas and continents, we are faced with few compass points. Pioneers choose struggle. We choose a new route as yet uncharted. This is our adventure. We need to be part of it, to drive it, play with it, start it. When do we grow? Failure pushes us forward. Failure forces us to act. We believe in the power of failure. There's nothing wrong with it, so long as it's fully stretched and undeniably complete. What's worse? The feeling that you should have done more. Keep going. Entrepreneurial spirit is focused on you, doing your thing your way. That's why we love startups. All startups. Starting a company makes you a pioneer, a hero in the making. Startups are challengers, innovators, tenacious, risk positive, visionary, driven, strong. We've pioneered our way to where we are today. We're here to give you rock solid support in the first thousand days. We help you grow by pushing you forward. To start and proceed takes courage. It takes guts, madness even. You take a leap of faith and create your space to challenge, make, build, develop, experiment, construct and thrive. Now that's why we love you. Step forward. Start. So, step forward, start. So the, so the first line of this manifesto is, look around you, everything is changing. And the last one is step forward, start. And then step forward, start is also a rock start mantra number one. It's not about the plan, it's about the step forward. Step forward, start. We'll get into the rock start mantras later. Okay, uh, this is a big, hairy, audacious goal. When I started out, people said, so you're going to work with startups, they don't have money, how are you going to make money anyway? And I said, I don't know. So what are you going to build? And I said, nothing less than the greatest startup machine ever built. And for the people that don't know the BHAG, the big, hairy, audacious goal. Make it as big as you can in order to project everything that you stand for as high on the clouds as you can. Not just because you want to make yourself bigger, it's just a way to tell the world what you stand for. And it'll attract attention, it'll give you focus. So Rockstar's big, hairy, audacious goal is let's build the greatest startup machine ever, nothing less. So then people said, why startups? They don't have money, there's no way that you can make money on the long term. We'd start on the short term if, if, if you can make it. You need deep pockets, long breath. Well, and I, and I was sort of getting into this and the people started asking, so why startups? And the only answer I could think of, and this was even before I had the name, I said, it's simple. Startups are the rock bands in business. They're small teams. They have a huge global ambition, but they're not in it for the chicks, the fame and the money. They're in it to prove something, that they have found something out in the studio that they want to share with the audience. So startups are the rock bands in business. Hence the name, Rockstar. Um, then I said, and we're going to help them. And they said, okay, how are you going to help? And it's simple. If you ask an entrepreneur what he or she needs, they'll probably say, we know everything. Just give us your money and we'll get going. And, the simple fact is, if you really start asking questions, people seldomly just need money. They need a lot of other things, and sometimes they need money or access to money later on. So what we do is, we have made this simple rockstar cocktail, and I guess that over the, over the last five years, many, uh, many initiatives have had this approach. It is about mentorship, it's about a, sp a specific space that supports them. And it's the most important thing, what we call the Wagamama effect. That's the effect. If you sit next to someone who knows someone and is willing to share whatever, it will make you grow as a company and as an entrepreneur. So that is the glue. That is what, I guess, the peer-to-peer the -peer mentoring is the glue. And then, of course, there's a lot of knowledge and stuff that we share with them so they can grow. What did we do? So the why is everything is changing, the how is this cocktail, and the what we've launched about six initiatives, four of them worked out, maybe even five. And what we're most known for is the one you see in the left of Rockstar Accelerator. Pressure cooker, high pressure, short time, a little bit of money, and a lot of mentoring 
and a lot of love. One of the things I notice on this event is that I see the word love so often, and I love that so much because it is about the love for what people actually do. It's about the love for someone starts building this little fire and it attracts people automatically, and then you be surrounded around the fire, and that's what love is. So, Rockstar Accelerator, the first thing that we launched eventually in 2012. We built three accelerators. We just launched a new one. I'll get into that later. And today we even had, I don't know, 118 alumni, but we're in some fields. So let me flip through it. I guess that the main part is that people feel like a part of a large global family. We have our family members coming from 35 different nationalities. They come from around the globe, but they all speak the same language. Statistically, 80%, normally statistically, 80% of startups fail within three years. And what we've seen now looking back over the last six years is that about 15 to 20% of the startups within our portfolio finally didn't make it. So we sort of flip the statistic. 80% goes on, so that's the flip of the statistic. 75% gets follow-on funding and they're able to grow. So these are some of the statistics. We've launched in specific fields, web mobile, anything that lives on your phone, or your Mac or your PC, smart energy, obviously, digital health. We always said the stuff that we can learn from tech companies, how tech companies are growing and how they're financed, let's apply that not on another marketing thing, let's apply it on big issues. Food, health, energy are big issues. So food, health, energy as the main growing markets for the future as well. I guess there is a lot to be done. So we just launched this week artificial intelligence, data science, and food tech is next on the list. Rockstar Answers. It's a setting like this, a little smaller, but if you, if you have startup events like this, you have many pitches, and all pitches are more or less about this is who I am as an entrepreneur, this is our team, this is what we're building, this is our promise to the world, and this is how much money we need in order to keep growing. And pitches are boring, they're always the same. It's the pitch and it's, please give me your money. And I guess that if you really start talking with an entrepreneur, there's always one thing that really keeps them awake at night, the biggest challenge that they have. And Rockstar Answers is about being able to share that challenge with your audience. So step forward and say, this is me, this is what we're building, and this is what keeps me awake at night. And then people in the room, start jolting down simple ideas and tips and books and documentaries you should watch or half an hour of my time and they will be given to the entrepreneur at the end and the entrepreneur who can't sleep of this goes home with sometimes 200 new insights to this problem. Rockstar answers. For us, I've tried everything to make money with this format. We're not making money with it so we use it as a way of expanding what we stand for and do it in as many cities as we can. We did it in France earlier, we did it in, I don't know, 30 cities uh, around Europe especially, to spread out what we stand for, as well as find the best startups and mentors and investors. Rockstar Answers, great format. We should do it in not sometime. Anyway, um, Rockstar Spaces, okay, well, you know what this is, right? It's a space tailored and designed for startups so we have about 300, I don't know, 50 people in Amsterdam from many different countries, 70 different companies, and they all sort of work together in making their thing work, Roxad Spaces. And then Roxad Impact. So when we started out, we said, okay, we can do many things to help people build companies, but it's not about the money, it's not about this family, it's about the impact that we should make. So at some point, Although it started opportunistically, we found some people in Nepal running a milk factory and they said, we see many opportunities, but we need a format to actually help them better and to attract investors and find startups. So we launched Roxanne Impact in Nepal and we did three classes, 30 companies. And if you look at what we do in the rest of the field, it's always technology oriented, innovation driven and globally scalable, and if you look at Roxxon Impact, it's innovation driven still, but it's locally scalable and it's um, impact oriented. So Roxxon Impact. 
And you see, it's, it's whether you're in Kathmandu or in Nantes or in Amsterdam or in South America, we all speak the same language of let's do this. Let's, this promise of the story of promise and hope, I guess, that really binds us. Anyway, does it work? Um, well, after six years, finally, I can say it does. We built, we helped build 118 companies and we reached out to many, many different people to sort of help them, push them, inspire them, pull them, kick them out of the comfort zone to either quit their job and start a company or to push through when it really gets hard. 118 startups to date and from now on 50 new companies every year. Innovation driven, tech oriented, globally scalable. Okay. But every day I guess that essentially because it's not money that keeps you going simply because you're not making any. I've spent everything I own into this company and still I'm smiling and I'm happy because it is about the love for what people stand for that builds something from nothing and the magic of building something from nothing that gives hope to everyone. So we surround our startups with the best people we can find and I guess that those people are what we would call the software of the company. So the glue is the peer-to-peer -peer structure, the software is the people that back us. So our team is about 50 people, but the 300 mentors around it, they spend their time and their energy on our startups. And that really is something because we just ask them, are you willing to spend a couple of hours over a couple of months for a couple of startups and we're not going to pay you? Is that okay? But they always say, I want to get close to where stuff is happening and I really want to share and give back to what I came from. So it's this love that's really one of the fundamentals. We've been doing that for five years, we've been growing globally and just to end this first, let's say, small promotion part of Rockstar, it's about the energy. People that walk into our space always say, man, this energy, how can I be a part of this? And just to give you a feeling of what it was like over the last five years or six years, just a little this is the noise part, I guess. Look around you.
So five years, great fun. Um, so what? Nice, interesting story, nice music. Could have been louder though, I guess. Next time we should pump up the volume a little more. So what? Well, what we see is there's so much you can learn from startups every day just by being around them and look at how they work, how they operate. And just to distill from that, I started writing down after the manifesto a couple of years later, so the five rocks up mantras, simply because it gives you insights. For some people, it's kicking in open doors, but still, it sort of gives you a feel of um, what the essence is of what they stand for. So the five rocks up mantras. I'll give you my email address later. I will send you the slides so you don't have to write them down or to photograph them. Step forward, start. It's the first one. You saw it in our manifesto. When I started my first company back in 1997, the, it was more or less like this. You locked yourself up in the attic. In the Netherlands, we don't have garages, so you locked yourself up in the attic for eight months. And you started writing down what you knew and what you found during your life and what you wanted to build. And then friends would say, or even family would say, so what is it that you're working on? And then you should say traditionally, I can't tell you. It's, it's a secret, and you have to sort of sign this non-disclosure agreement, or I have to kill you, so I can't talk about it. This was stupid, but it was the way it was done. Then you built it, and you had a business plan like this, this thick. And then you started working on the figures, this thick, spreadsheets. I still don't understand spreadsheets, but you had to come up with spreadsheets. And then what happened? You went to a bank, and you didn't get any money. That's sort of what happened, standard. I know, I didn't get any money from any bank ever. Anyway, yes, when I gave them my house, but that's something else. Anyway, today it's different, it's completely different. You stand, you, you sort of dive into what you love and what you stand for, and then it is step forward, start, and start talking to as many people as you can about what it is that you want to build, what you want, what you want to see in this world, to as many people as you can. And maybe once or twice you should have a patent first or buy a domain name, but for the rest, talk as long and as fast to as many people as, I, as you can with this idea. Step forward, start. That's the essence. And the step forward, start is also the essence of this presentation because it's this. Stepping forward and start is the ability to leave everything behind that you know that has built you, that your ego has got really attached to, and get out of that, out of that comfort zone. And to give you a good example of what it can mean to what we've witnessed as one of the companies, it's, you see this guy on the left, his name is Brian Garrett, he's a Dutch guy by the way, and he's, he had this vision, he worked at this large 3D printing manufacturer, and they were starting bigger and better 3D printing machines and he, he thought, this doesn't make sense. We're just making new, bigger machines, and at some point, we'll have big machines, and then there's a courier, and there's a truck, and there's a boat, and we have to bring all these products to the other side of the world. And the reason he wanted to get into 3D printing was simple. He said, 3D printing isn't about prototypes. It is about distributed manufacturing. We can build anything. If the quality goes up, we can build anything everywhere like that. We don't need bigger machines, we need a network of machines. So his idea was as simple as, today you would say, an Airbnb for 3D printing. So this picture, he told us later, was taken during the selection process at the Rockstar Accelerator 2013, our second one. And there and then he decided, whatever happens, even if I don't get into this accelerator, I will get out of my comfort zone, I will quit my job because I need to build what's inside of me. And that was 3D hubs. That was his vision. Let's build a network of 3D printers. So he got out. Luckily, he got selected for him and for us. A year later, he attracted some good investor money from abroad, and he started building. And a year after that, he had 23,000 connected printers, and today it's over 35,000. And he is now present in more countries than McDonald's as restaurants. So, Maybe not a good reference, McDonald's, but if it looks like on a global brand scale, they really hit it. This is what it means to get out of your comfort zone. This is what it can mean, having the ability to letting go. The second one is, uh, I could have learned from that, team up, 
do it because if you're alone like this, you're alone and you see this, but there's so much you can't see, so team up, do it. That's just a simple mantra. Make sure you will find the people next to you that can help you cover the other side of the room where something happens that you don't understand, the language that you don't speak, team up, do it. Um, yeah, and it's way more fun, right? <laughs>
your approach, your team, your strategy, your name, anything, anything that helps the company get to the next level is about pivoting. And the pivoting, it's, it's not nice because if you pivot, you have to start over again. And starting over it sucks. Starting over feels I wasted all this time and it feels like this. It feels like defeat. But it's not defeat, it's research and development. It's, it might not be fun, but then at least you can get rid of this. In Dutch, this is expressing like pulling a dead horse, but I don't know if you understand it, but you know what it feels like, right? Pulling a dead horse doesn't really work. This is what it feels like. Get over it, get to the next level. So start over again. Um, and this is my favorite. If you do this, if you start over again, and not once, but twice or three times, or maybe ten times, and you feel the energy drain of this company, and people start asking, are you still working on this X, Y, Z, and so you don't look so well, and do you sleep, and what do you eat, and all that. And then you just say, hey, I'm just keeping up. And what I love about this mantra is, um, I'm a yoga teacher as well, and, you can, and we have, I'm in this strange yoga thing called Kundalini Yoga, and Kundalini Yoga is about keeping up. One of the mantras in Kundalini is something like this one, keep up and keep going. And if you know what I mean, if you have your hands up in the sky for, I don't know, 31 minutes or one hour, after 10 minutes you think that your arms will fall off, obviously they never will. It's about getting through this mental barrier. I can't do this. I can't do this. Well, you can. And I have seen so many people transform for, I'm not sure I can, I know I cannot, to yes, we can. We can do this. We can keep this up. So keep up and keep going. And make sure you don't die. That's the only thing. Keep breathing. Eat something. Don't die. But keep up and keep going. And to, to sort of illustrate this, uh, I end with final small movie of an entrepreneur that really inspired me. It's about keep up and keep going. It's not a typical entrepreneur, uh, but the thing is, it's about that. So it's a nice movie, music is good too, I think, but the one thing is listen to what he has to say because it's the essence, I guess, of what this mantra means. Keep up and keep going. Let me give him one quote when it starts. I had to learn new stuff, I had to keep going, and I had to risk myself, Tony Hawk. Pressure has certainly made me perform better. The only way to get recognized was through competition. A lot of people will reach the top of their ranks and then they just cruise. I had to learn new stuff. I had to keep going. I had to risk myself. That's why I started trying 900s. To me, that was the holy grail. A 900 is a skateboard trick. It's basically a two and a half spin in the air. The X Games came around 1999 and they had a best trick event. 20 minutes on the ramp, do your best trick. While I was doing it, I didn't care if it counted. I didn't care if there were no people there. I was either gonna make that thing or I was gonna get taken out in an ambulance. I think that's what separates the people who succeed and the people who don't. Those who can really do it when it absolutely counts and pull it out when it seems like all odds are against you. I didn't believe I had made it until I saw everyone rushing around. And that's when I realized that it is. It's not a competition, it's time-based. You just make it happen, you kind of force it. Sometimes you get hurt, but that's the best way to get hurt. I don't know, I'm, I, I think I've seen this movie 3,000 times, maybe even 7,000, I don't know, but still it sort of gives me the goosebumps. Anyway, <coughs> keep up and keep going, and I guess that the the final, the last quote that he has, really, really, that's the one I really love. And it goes back to the first mantra, the end of the Rockstar Manifesto, step forward, start. And it's this one. Sometimes you get hurt, but it's the best way to get hurt. Thank you for your attention. Have a good show.